Hey everybody, it's Eddie Brill here. OG Talk, OG for the Organic Grill, one of my favorite restaurants in the world. And I'm here with my co-host, the owner, proprietor, the uh, Vlad Greenberg, who's the uh, sort of the organic part of Organic Grill. And uh, our guest today is my dear friend, Artie Lang. So happy to have you here. What's up, Ed? Great to be here. Yeah, I haven't seen Vlad, you in a while. nice to see you. Salud. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Right. Here's to nice weather That's and a good our start. health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're still alive. The, Just the uh, borscht. Mm, yeah, right. And the Jets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's too... That's like ruining, <laughs> ruining, a, uh, ruining a vegan restaurant with a Jet shirt. <laughs> well, I think ruining it would be with borscht. I don't fucking... I don't know how anyone can eat beets, and then when you smash them up like that, and then make a drink out of them. I dated a girl who was who was. Uh, oh, of you Russian never descent. tried a good one. Yeah, no, I, da I dated a girl who was of Russian descent. Beautiful girl, right. and uh, I actually this is this is how you know uh, the younger generation doesn't doesn't know. You, you, you ever you ever meet like a younger person, and and being a comic, you know every old joke, and the fact is they don't know the jokes, so everything sounds like a new joke. Yeah, to them. and you're a genius. So you can seem like a genius. So I met her. And she told me she was Russian, and I said, "What's your hurry?" You know, like that old joke. And she laughed hysterically, like it was George Carlin at Carnegie Hall. And I said, "This is going to be easy." Yeah, right. And her her sister cooked borscht, and I think also sold cocaine because uh, I bought cocaine from her. But uh, yeah, she, uh, she she I, I love borscht, but I, you can't have that in a vegan uh, restaurant. Right? No, borscht can be vegan easy. Oh yeah. yeah. Next time you're coming, I, I'll have a borscht for you. This is probably the last time I'm coming, but yeah. Yeah. Right. No, I don't blame you. But <laughs> I'm not a vegan. I'm not a vegan guy. No, but you're gonna. The food is amazing here, and you, we're gonna bring some out. And you're gonna taste yeah, it. Yeah, okay, absolutely. And we got onion rings coming. We That's know that. good. And onion rings doesn't matter. Can where. you fry vegan food like fry? Sure. Oh my God, your knowledge of vegan food just just getting yeah, yeah. high. Well, I, I had a roommate when, when I did Mad TV in Los Angeles. My roommate was this guy, Orlando Jones, who right. was on the show. Great guy. We were roommates. We lived in a loft in downtown L.A. You, had, was, a, you had to be roommates? That yeah. was the deal? Well, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it was just a long story. But you could have played full court basketball in this court in downtown L.A., but it was the mm -hmm. mid-'90s, so it was not a great area. But we had a beautiful place. He was vegan. And being from North Jersey, Italian, vegans were so... I, I thought they didn't even Freaks. exist. It was like a... It was like a fairy tale. And uh, we would go, he would have like couscous in the fridge and I would have moons over my hammy from right, Denny's yeah. uh, and they would get like in a brawl. But uh, so now I, I've known vegans for a while but I never dabbled in it. Yeah, well, you, you know, you and me. You and have even, a chance now. Yeah. Yes, I can't and, wait. And, and our friend Colin, we had all separately had gone to Hippocrates because that was part of us trying to get healthy. Colin was working on his Broadway show, he wanted right. to lose weight, right, and, right, right. and you thought that would maybe help you. Well, my sister, who was vegan uh, for a little while, uh, she still she still goes in and out of that, but um, she told me about it. I, it. For me, I was trying to get off drugs. I was doing every drug on the planet. And I was, I was at a, a, basically a health spa doing heroin. So that's that, that's not a great. Is that thing. part of the <laughs> protocol? <laughs> it was vegan heroin. Yeah, there was and no you, meat in it. Because you lose but, a lot of weight on heroin. It, well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I snorted and, heroin. And, and cocaine. Okay. Well, yeah. People ask me how I got this. Oh, nose. that's a good conversation. I I can't even be part of it. Huh? Good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's good. I got this nose uh, not from doing too much yoga, but I uh, <laughs> I, I stopped to smell the roses in life, and they had cocaine on them. Yeah. But I, I was at Hippocrates, and I left eight days into it. And uh, to to go to Miami to get to get high, I should have stayed at Hippocrates. Right, they had enough stuff to get you high right there. You didn't have to drive two and a half hours. No, right it's now. it's it's amazing how like you know, uh, I, I was getting a I, I actually got a colonic. I you know, right. And this woman, this like. 58-year-old woman asked me how old I was, and I told her I was 40, and she went, oh, that's the age when I first had my first 16-inch bowel movement. Uh, she, like, yeah. like, like, like she lost her virginity or something. But, but, <laughs> but the interesting thing is that Hippocrates, you talk about your asshole all the time and how yeah. you shit. In fact, people would say, how are you? And I came up with a thing that that would be like, <laughs> okay, because that's how my asshole was. Well, when you, walk around, when you walk around that place, you realize there's nothing but people around you shitting. Right. Everyone's just shitting. Like, like, like there's, there's people two feet from you shitting, and then you realize New York is just the same thing. I, I, exactly. It's just that, wow, we should, we should get a sponsor about Colonic, man. <laughs> No, well, v, I, I tell you, I, I, my point is I should have gotten healthier a long time ago. Yeah. Well, you're not making a, a secret about, you know, not being healthy but taking care of yourself. The, the show Crashing 
which was phenomenal. I have no fucking clue why it's not on the air. Well, because I got arrested. That's why. Because I couldn't be there anymore. <laughs> ah, that's the one? No, 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 no. Of course not. I, I, uh, but you talk about it. You, you know, you're, I mean, a lot of people are, you know, my sister passed away from heroin. Uh, my brother. I didn't know that, actually. That's, uh, that's yeah. sorry to hear that. No, yeah. but, but here's the thing. You know, they do it in the secret of their lives and yeah. within the families. You're saying it on television. Well, I, I, you know, again, the, the, the goal is obviously to, you know, along with... I mean, I'm a comedian, you know, so we try to be honest about your life. And the way, you know, you would write material about your life or yeah, Ray Romano wrote material about his kids and his family. Right. My life went another way. So, you know, that's, that's what I talk about. I try to be honest. Does it help you to talk about it? It does. You know, I, I got nine months clean and sober next week. So there you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Which, that's a miracle. Right. That, I mean, when this airs, is, let's hope that it's 10 months. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, well I, the last time I had nine months clean and sober, I was nine months old, I think. Right. I, 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 I've been doing drugs a long time. Yeah. The first time I got high was 1979. Jimmy Carter was president. You know, is that I, why you I, got high? <laughs> <laughs> I said I can't take the Iran hostage. Right, what, what, what do you think helped you this time, like to stay that long? Uh, well, get you know, I, I, I've been going to jail too since the '80s, but I'm 52 years old and I can't do it anymore. Yeah. I can't. Do, I, 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 I'm, I don't want. You know, I got real consequences. Because so, in the beginning, you were. You'd done some things, like I remember that bank thing we talked about a million years ago. Yeah, you yeah. didn't go to jail. The, fir the first time I got arrested, I was 17 years old, so I right. did bank robbery. And uh, I, I went to jail for a, a little while, and then I had to go on probation and stuff. And then, you know, when, when, when my father passed away when I was really young, he was like my best friend, and then the drugs just got out of control. Gambling, right. you know, doing stupid stuff like gambling on the jets. Right, of course, uh, gambling that your that your friend would be a Jets fan. <laughs> no, I, I just you know it, it just my life got chaotic, right. and and then I got into comedy, and then the enabling that goes on there, forget it. And yeah. I started making endless money, and it went from there. You know, you know, you're speaking to your father. When I was doing a little research, um, our fathers both avoided jail and did some some crazy things. I yeah. saw that my father was selling videotapes that were not legal right. to sell. Okay. And he had all this money, you know, cash that he made hidden in his uh, okay. ceiling. And now the money was gone to keep him from going uh, to jail. It was like a couple, 250 grand. Well, it's funny. Well, well, that was real money. My father's thing, he, had, he was holding counterfeit money for these mm -hmm. local wise guys in Newark. And uh, we had this small apartment just outside of Newark, New Jersey. And uh, my father was married before my mom. I, my mother just told me that a few years ago. Oh, what? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't know that. So he had a bad divorce when he was a kid, and the woman ratted him out to the cops. Uh, and the local gangsters said to him, look, you know, uh, they came in, they raided our apartment. I was like two weeks old. And uh, the feds came in and took the money because she told them where it was and everything. It was 200 grand right. in, in counterfeit money. So he was looking at 15 years and the gangster said, don't just shut your mouth and we'll get you a lawyer and everything will be all right. He didn't rat, but the, the, the legend is my mother took me to the court when I was like a month old and uh, showed me to the jury. And I kind of smiled and I got my first laugh. Right. I, have, right, I, 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 I don't jail. have a borscht, but I have other things too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He'll bring out the food. Leaving, yes. Uh, with He's, that story. Yes. But yeah, so, uh, well, listen, you know, the, we're, I don't want to deal with counterfeit money. I'm just, <laughs> I, got I, mean, a, I, got, I got enough on my shoulders. Yeah, no, my, my father, th that happened when he was selling, you know, back in the day when they had like the the X-rated uh, VHS. Yeah. What was it, the 60s? No, I no. mean, those seven, oh, yeah, VHS, yes, had to be like early I, 80s. Early 80s. 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, he had that, and he was making money hand over fist, and then Morgenthau was the uh, right. the guy there. All right, <laughs> tell, tell just me. just brings the food. Yeah, he, he <laughs> does. Right, this is our OG burger. Original gangster burger. Yeah. Right, this yeah. is uh, uh, mac and cheese bombs. Did, did Vlad know about the original gangster thing when he made this OG? Is no. that like a takeoff on it's that? It's actually organic. Grill. Eventually, <laughs> okay, he, yeah, or, yeah, he didn't do that. I'm known as an OG in jail. Yeah. Some of the young brothers call me that because I'm older. You're right. They say, how'd you get that nose, OG? And I go, vegan restaurants. Right, that's how that worked out. So this looks amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Do you know John Joseph from the cro -Mags? Not the... the yeah, uh, uh, well, well, I know, I know the, the lead team. singer, the lead singer of... Uh, uh, the Cro Mags. Right. Uh, that's is, our uh, friend John, and John, this is that's his. Our friend. This oh, is his. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, let me tell you something. Blood clot. Blood clot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Uh, I saw the Cro Mags. Uh, you talk about drugs in, yeah. 19, in the eighties, uh, right around here, actually. Yeah. Probably at probably at the old uh, at the old Ritz uh, yeah. that became yeah. Webster Hall. Right. And I, I knew Johnny, I know Johnny very well. I haven't seen him in a long time, but I love Johnny. Yeah, he lives in the... Comes here like three times a week. Oh, yeah. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. Yeah. So he's he's vegan now and everything. Yeah, he and he's an Iron to become Man. Vegan. That's amazing. Yeah, he's a tough guy, Johnny. He's a tough guy. Yeah, and he's... You know, the reason I came here to this restaurant... Right. You know, I've been in this East Village neighborhood since 1980. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very careful. Here. It's hot. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Guys, this is we really hot. Have. Those are low That looks price. amazing. Yeah. So I can just dig and in here? Make yeah. Out, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah right. Let me just help you out. And <laughs> I feel yeah. like Vlad's my mom right now. <laughs> it's a little, 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 you know, has the old apron on and everything. Yeah, no, the, this food's amazing. That's the difference, you and know. This for, is, for, yeah. For, now, Vlad, did you make any money colluding with Trump? Oh, boy. <laughs> I, I, we really had a good time. Are you that, Vlad? <laughs> uh, the, 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 so these are potatoes? Yeah. And these are onion rings. All right. This is the good stuff. This is hot. Yeah. Be careful. Don't put your nose in it. <laughs> my nose won't fit in there. Mm. Oh, my Did God. Did you know Lauren Dombrowski? Because you, you, you were the first year of... Uh, well. of I, yeah. she, okay, Lauren, Lauren was my friend from college. We yeah, all went to Emerson. And, and up in Boston. Yeah. Okay, Lauren Dombrowski. I do the whole first year of Mad TV. Lauren wasn't working there. She worked on a sketch show that Roseanne Barr had. She did, a, she did like two episodes. It was going to replace Mad TV after the first year. It didn't do well, so Mad TV got picked up. Mm -hmm. Lauren came from Roseanne's show to write for Mad TV. Lauren and I hit it off as great friends from the second she came there. She wrote a sketch that I was in. Mm -hmm. we, we really collaborated a lot, and she was in the program. She was in AA. She was a 12-stepper. She had a lot of clean time. And typical self-destruction on my part. Lauren said to me, when you, get it, when you get a year clean, I'll take you out to have a big dinner. I was two weeks before a year clean, after I came out of L.A. County Jail. Two weeks before, we did an episode of Mad TV. We all had a part, we had parties afterwards at this restaurant, the Sunset Strip. And I had a Jack and Coke. I said to myself, people think I'm drinking a soda. And Lauren, like, almost knew. It was like, like, she has a radar about it. And she was so sad that I had fallen off the wagon. I said, I'm just going to drink tonight. Two weeks later, I was in jail again for possession of cocaine. That's how it escalated. But Lauren was a dear, dear friend. Yeah. Yeah, I she well. was a roommate. We were in a comedy group at Emerson together in college. Right. She was the one who told me to get rid of my mustache. And, you know, she was so hot. Yeah. And she was like, we're, 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 you know, getting ready in the morning in the mirror. And she goes, girls don't want to fuck you with that mustache. And I was like, we're <laughs> shave it right off. Immediately shaved it off because what Lauren said no, that, that, went. That, that. Boston girls are very, um, are very, uh, are very honest. I dated a girl from Southie. Right. And she was beautiful. But, but when, when, like, like in bed, it sounded like you're fucking Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you cock, you cock. You're wicked hot. <laughs> yeah, your clock is high. Yeah, your cock, yeah, right. <laughs> your cock is high. I mean, you're, you're intimidated by them. Mm -hmm. Wow. I dated a girl from Jersey, an Italian girl from Jersey, who was actually my fiance for a while. She she sounded like Dice Clay when she yelled at me. <laughs> That's good. She was b b adorable. She like at dinner she go, "You fat fuck." <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, Boston girls are, uh, you know. Yeah, I remember. But I, I I miss Lauren like crazy. You yeah. know, I, as an outsider, I just want to tell you, I was reading your biography today. In I'm sorry. A, in a, <laughs> and I was like. It's amazing. He must yeah, be absolutely. a really good guy because he has he has a lot of a lot of friends who help him over the course of his life. And uh, people like Eddie Bro, yeah, uh, you so know, who, real people. Who, who is supporting you uh, emotionally and uh, like who do you? Well, consider that's what this meeting's friend? about, Vlad. I was hoping you would be uh, yeah. my best friend. <laughs> you know, you be surprised. Yeah, I like Vlad. Vlad is amazing. <laughs> no, the best the best restaurant tours in New York or any good city are, are also like shrinks a lot of the time, like bartenders. No, I have. Yeah, that's a, true. That's a great that's question. Yeah, that's that's a great question. I have uh, good friends in comedy. Uh, a lot of people are in recovery. There used to be a stigma attached to getting better. With, with drugs and alcohol, but now it's almost like a hip thing to do. Yeah, you know? I'm doing I, it with food. Yeah, what I'm am. saying, I'm, we, uh, you know, people, you know, it's so funny, you, you lose so many friends younger. I, uh, Mitch Hedberg's been dead, what, 15 years? Right. And, you know, and you I, know Patrice I, uh, and Geraldo. Kevin Meany, Geraldo. Yeah. And, and and Patrice wasn't wasn't a, a, a drug guy, but he was he he couldn't stop eating. Couldn't stop man. eating. I, you yeah, know, with you know. me, I weighed three seventy. Right, something's so, gonna kill you if yeah, it's not so. drugs. I mean, what's the difference? You know. I'd go shopping at the Big and Tall, and it was me, Patrice, and uh, what's the name, Panette. 
we'd yeah. all be there at the same time. <laughs> oh my God. And then those two guys go down. And that guy I'd covered like, his nut for the month there. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. and then I, I was like really overweight and I was laying in bed going, you know, I think I've had a great life and I yeah, think I probably know. might not wake up tomorrow yeah, because totally. my friends have died. And that's when I said, fuck it, I'm going to do this food. And uh, So you had all these people who support a lot you. Of, a lot of great people in comedy who are very supportive. It's funny, you know, Patrice and I got locked in the bathroom at the Comedy Cellar ones. And, and you know, it's a small bathroom. Mm -hmm. And I said, we have, to do, we have to do cocaine until we can fit out of here. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, but but uh, I, uh, I have a lot of great friends I grew up with, too. And my family, my mother and sister, are, I can't even describe. Is your sister they're, older? They're angels. She's 15 months younger, but in every way she's more mature. Right. She's my hero. My That's sister. hard to do. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, she, she's she, she's just someone who has dealt with a lot of crap. See, I'm I'm the opposite of a lot of junkies in the sense of I also made money. I paid right. for everything in a house, so they can't kick me out of the house. It's my right. house. You know, yeah, I bought right. my mom the house. Isn't that uh, weird? Yeah, kind of yeah. Right. So, so they couldn't tell me anything. So they can't do interventions. Well, they tried a couple of times, uh, but nothing, nothing worked until recently. And I'm 52. Right now, another guy that's your your this friend. Amazing, is amazing. I'm telling you, the food is great. Now, Norm this McDonald. This is burger. Yeah, he did. I'm eating some Leave of it. it. He knows. We, we're sharing. He is or I was bringing up Norm Macdonald. Norm yeah. Macdonald is one of the funniest people in the world and has birthdays this, like in within October. a week of us. Yep. I'm the 16th, you're the 11th, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, he's the... Norm is um, one of the funniest human beings. I did, a, I did a movie with Norm. I did uh, two years on a sitcom with Norm as a regular. And I toured with him a little bit. I opened mm -hmm. for him to promote yeah. the movie we did, Dirty Work. But you talk about addiction. It, it, here's a great story about, about Norm. Well, first of all, when, when the movie Dirty Work came out, the review said Artie Lang, the review actually said this in my hometown paper, said Artie Lang has all, has all the charm of a date rapist. Okay? <laughs> and here's how, and I was upset about that. Here's how really? Norm, here's how, oh, Norm, well, cheer, here's really? how Norm cheered me up. He said, hey man, that's fucking great. A, a date rapist has to have way more charm than a regular rapist. <laughs> uh, so, 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 so he's just one of the quickest human beings ever. Yeah. Chris Farley's in Dirty Work. It's his last movie. In between shooting, uh, you know, Dirty Work and Dying, he hosted Saturday Night Live. Right. So Norm calls me up in the middle of the week and said, you got to come to the after party Saturday to help me watch Farley. He's out of control with Coke. That's how bad he was. He wanted me to watch right, him. Right, exactly. Okay, uh, okay so, so we, I, I go to the after party, and Norm is talking to somebody, and I'm watching Farley, and Farley disappears into a bathroom with Andy Dick, mm. okay, and comes out. So Norm comes over and says to me, how's Farley doing? I said, bad news. <laughs> I said, he went into a bathroom with Andy Dick. I said, Norm, there's only two reasons a guy goes into a bathroom with Andy Dick. And neither one of them is good. And, 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 and without missing a beat, Norm looked at me and said, holy fuck, I hope he's high. <laughs> <laughs> and good news, he was high. Yeah, that is I was high. Uh, but, you know, uh, again, you, uh, the people you meet, Norm's a supportive guy. When I, when I get arrested, Norm always tweets, hey, what the fuck are you doing, man? Yeah. That's what he said. And you know, Letterman, w yeah. you know, w really loved you. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, and still loves you, I'm sure. Yeah. I, you know, but he would always ask me about you and always check in on oh, you. Oh, really? Yeah. He, and uh, yeah. he really cared for you. And he, you know, if you had rough times, he wanted to know about it. If you had good times, he wanted to know about it. That's nice. And a funny thing is, the last time I did Letterman as a guest, right. we did the show together. That's right. That's and right. And what I always remember about oh, it. This stuff is nice. I, I never eat it. You should eat Excellent. it. It's pretty good. Excellent. The last time we did, the producers at Letterman were the best of the best. But sure. the show we were on, you were the first guest. I was the comic at the end. Right. And we both had a bit about online dating. <laughs> right. So I ended up doing a callback to one of your jokes. That it wasn't that we had the same joke. It was the same topic. Yeah. So yeah. I did a callback to your joke. Got a nice laugh on it. But now when you watch the videotape of me, you don't see you. Right. So it's like oh, here yeah, I am yeah, with yeah, a callback yeah. to nothing. Oh, I never knew because you don't see. I leave and I didn't right. see the set. Yeah, I, I um a call back to nothing. I'm like, <laughs> you know what he said, and the audience. Let me, let, me, <laughs> let me tell you something about Letterman that was so touching. He had I, I did the show maybe seven or eight times while I was on Howard. I started out as the last guest, and mm -hmm. he made me the first guest on the show a couple of times. You know, which mm -hmm. is which is again that's 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 my Carson, obviously. Right. So, and I always got a chance to see you. Uh, all the band was always nice to mm -hmm. me. Paul, everybody, the, the producers were great. But when I went away after I left Howard in a very, you know, a drug mess, um, 
the first talk show to have me back was like the the, the biggest one to me and Letterman. He, put, he had me right on at the and the, I, I I like watching it because it's um. He's almost, he's, he's, it's almost like a concern, not even yeah. about comedy, like how are you doing? Right. And stuff like that. Again, like Vlad was asking about support, like stuff like that. It's, like, it's unreal. It's unreal. Now, what about, I was looking up, you know, you know, of course it was like, I was asking you who'd be your influence in comedy, and I noticed the same as mine, Pryor and Carlin. Right. But also Richard Lewis, someone said that you... Richard Lewis is a guy who i become friendly with, and when I was, you know, I always loved John Belushi, Bill Murray... Uh, you know Richard Pryor, well, and, and then Eddie Murphy when I was in. in, in and high he's school. back. Eddie Murphy's going to come I, back. I, I, I love that. Eddie Murphy to me might be the most talented human being. Yeah. Eddie Murphy is the kind of funny where he's going to. He could tell you he's about to be funny. He's funny, and then he stops. He goes, oh, "That's it. Like that's all I'm giving you." Yeah. Like, uh, and um, but so I wanted to do sketches, sketch comedy, stand up was something I love, but I, I don't like. I was more into like John Belushi and stuff like that. Then I saw Richard Lewis's. I think it was either his first show, it was a showtime. He, he did it at the Improv in LA. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget this. They would cut to the they would cut to the the audience, and the father from Laverne and Shirley was in the audience. Oh yeah, that guy, yeah. He's <laughs> that great. Guy. That guy's I go, great. I, who knows what's his name? Richard Lewis is like killing on stage at the improv with the piano there in LA on Melrose. And then they cut to the guy from Laverne and Shirley. <laughs> um and uh, but I, I the way the way I, I watch Richard Lewis tell all those jokes and 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 his look, he looked like a rock star with the long hair. It just looked like a blast. It looked like, you know, these people are laughing. He's got their attention. Everybody are on the edge of the seat. A uh, comedian, you know, we have people's attention. It's a power trip in a way. Like, yeah. all these people are looking at you and you're making them laugh. And and the way Richard Lewis did it, his look, he was young at the time. And and it just looked like fun to me. It looked like so much fun. And, and it was always an influence. And I was able to meet Richard after that. And uh, I did a couple of gigs with him. It's great. Yeah, he's, he's phenomenal. And he did, did Letterman. One of the best joke writers ever, I think. Yeah, and continues, you know, Curb Your Enthusiasm when yeah, he would be on that show. Just funny yeah. and great. But it's not always great. At the beginning, this, you have a similar story to me as well. In the you go to the improv in New York and you do a set and the crowd's <laughs> like, who the fuck, you know, oh, yeah, look. Bomb, uh, bomb, yeah. yeah, it was. Uh, July the 12th, 1987. Uh, it's funny 19, how we know the date. I was 19 years old and I, 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 I uh, my own How'd man. How'd you get on? Did you put a thing in the. I, I did. They had the hat, you pull right. it out. And the first time I went, there, there were 200 pieces of paper in there. 10 of them have numbers on them. If you pick out a number, you get, and I'm like, I'm never going to get this. The first time I go, I got number 10. Wow. So I went to the Milford Plaza. Uh, and I'm in the bathroom practicing my act, and I'm like, this should be fine. I didn't prepare anything. And I bombed terribly. terribly. How'd you do in the bathroom? <laughs> there was a guy shitting and, and, like and, 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 you, and, you did, and you didn't uh, uh, come I, to stage for four years. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I did stand up a week later in, in, in Jersey at a sports bar. I had like a comedy night. I couldn't get people's attention away from a Met Philly game. Right, they were just annoyed by me. And then I stopped for a couple of years. So what br and, brought you back? Just desperation. I, I wanted it so bad. Like I, I've always looked like a slob, but I, I, I'm a real ambitious guy. I mean, I, I, and back then I had such tunnel vision. I, I, I didn't graduate high school on time. I was a terrible student. I had no, I didn't go to college. I had no skills. I was a, a so local. So that was your thing, right? A local guy got me a job as a longshoreman at the Port of Newark, like Brando, and on the waterfront. Right. I was. Uh, I was working loading trucks. I said, it's either stand-up comedy, comedy in some way, or loading trucks. So I said, I'm, I'm going to try it again. My father died when I was 22, and I went back at 22, and I got into it. I just kept going until I got better. Right, and, and that's I, the way yeah. it is. And it gets, now that you're back doing stand-up, is it better than ever? Or are you, have you had to take a couple of steps backwards, or where are you now? In a lot of ways, it is, because my material, like we said before, was always honest, but it's more honest than ever now. Because, you know, the only when you when you when you become a comedian of any sort, especially and this happens on the radio for me big time mm -hmm. with Howard. You just want to make a connection with the crowd. So if they come to see you do stand up, they already know you. You have a relationship with them. Your fans, and they, uh, I have that now. The relationship I have with the fans I have, from the radio and Mad TV and 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 books and everything like that is so amazing. It's like a friendship. They're like my family. So when they come to see me, that the part where you have to introduce yourself is gone. Right. And now th th that's never been more true. So when I do a gig now, like I just did Governors of Long Island. I was up with Vinny in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Right. Uh, 
I'm back on the road. I did a theater in Albany, and, and I, I, the people come, they know me. So it's like I'm doing stand-up for my friends at a party. No, and it's, it's never, like and, I'm, and I'm slow, and I'm clean, and sober. It's never been more fun, ever. ever. And you said that yeah, I'm more honest than ever. So do you think you're getting, uh, getting better than ever? Because yeah, yeah. drugs I are think, usually I mean, accompanied with not being honest with yourself, like lying yeah, that, and stuff. That, so that, you feel great, like... That, uh, that's a great question, Mike. Uh, in a Russian accent, that's a great question. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> you sounded like Elvis when you when you respond. That's a great question. A great, we'll be right back. Uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> um, I uh, no, to, to, and to answer that question, um, you know, I think w w when you get into comedy, you want to be the funniest guy in the world, and then you realize your limitations. So I think if you're any kind of artist who makes uh, money at any type of art. You just want to be the best that you could possibly be eventually. And for a long time, I wasn't because of the drugs, because of my lifestyle. I think I'm as close to being as good as I can be, whatever that is. Right. And, I, and after a while, you don't care where you fall in the, like, what, what number are you on the yeah, list? Yeah, that's of all funny bullshit. Right. It's all bullshit. It's like, where am I on my own list? Am I as funny as I could be? Am I as good as I can be at, at this, at my, my art, my trade? Right. So, uh, and Eddie you and I are... Uh, our trade is kept being funny, you know. Am I as good as I can be at that? I think I'm as close to that as I. And ever if you work been. your ass off and you are honest, right. like at the beginning, you know, I was silly and Carlin esque, but I wasn't honest. I wasn't vulnerable. You gotta grow. You gotta grow. Absolutely. And you, you gotta, gotta live evolve. life. A Letterman right. actually said once in an interview, it was definitely Letterman. He said. No one's funny when they're 18, except, I guess, Chappelle or Chappelle. Eddie Murphy, maybe. Chappelle. <laughs> I mean, the only I person I ever saw at, like, 16 comes out and yeah. told his truth. He had an amazing sort of um, uh, outlook on life that was very mature at a young age. But, but Letterman, I mean, said, he goes, he goes, I think a, a man is kind of the funniest at 35 years old because you've lived enough life to see pain. you got to know some pain. Yeah. And comedy will do that to you. And, uh, and but but you're also not too old to where you're out of touch. So 35 to 40 is right in the middle there. But I think now with the way the world is, you can make that even older. I think yeah, but, at 52, but, I feel the best I've ever been. Yeah. Right. Look at you know people like Joan Rivers or Rickles or people in their 90s and they're they're just you know and they're never lost a edge. Right. And you get I mean, better. Joan so, Rivers never lost a edge. Yeah. Wow. It, it's it, and she was great to me when I did Letterman the very first time. I ran into her on a flight, she switched with the lady next to me. Really? And said, let me hear your set. And oh, gave wow. Me wow. Yeah. I'll give, you, was... I'll give you my Carlin story. So, uh, similar to that. Right. Um, I, uh, after, um, after uh, Conan left, uh, uh, ha Letterman went to CBS. Right. And he hired Greg Kilborn, the old guy from ESPN. Right. I did a movie before I was on Howard called The Bachelor with Renee Zellberg. It was the most mainstream film I ever did. I was like the third lead. I played Chris O'Donnell's best friend. Me, me and Chris O'Donnell were supposed to be best friends since the second grade. It looks like we just met that morning. <laughs> looks like I put his cable in, you know. But uh, whatever. That's a better so, movie. So um, it's, it's a big sort of mainstream movie for Warner Brothers. And they, they said you're going to promote, do a big tour, press, press tour. So I, I, I did uh, Killborn. And I'm like, okay, I'm the second guest. So I say to my manager, I go, who's the first guest? And you don't want to follow a great comedian. He goes, George Carlin. Mm. Oh. I go, excuse me? I thought he was kidding. Yeah. But George Carlin was the first guest. So in the green room, Carlin could tell I'm like, I I'm like out of my mind going, what am I doing here? You know? So uh, when you do a talk show like that, when, when the first guest leaves, there's a little area that's no man's land where none of the bullshit artists, like the agents and managers are there, and nobody from the show is there. There's like a little, where you like might pass airlock. each other. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Carlin passes me, and I could, t he never said a word to me the whole time. I think he was letting me be in my own space, and he could tell I was nervous. He goes, hey kid, come here. He goes, and he hugged me. He goes, you're gonna be great, man. He goes, I know you work with Norm, I love Norm, I heard you're really funny. You're gonna be fine, this is gonna be great. And he hugged me, and he gave me his phone number. Mm. He had his phone number ready for me. He yeah. said, if you ever want to talk about jokes, call me. And I put it on my, and so I had such confidence. I went out and the first line, Kilborn said, how you doing? And I said, uh, good, it's always uh, great to follow the best comedian ever. <laughs> <laughs> and that got a big laugh and it diffused it and I, 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 I did all right. And I called Carlin twice after that and he called me back both times. Yeah. Wow. I mean, within like a half an hour. Yeah. I, I mean, stuff like that. I, I almost cried telling that story. Yeah, I know. I, you know, he did so much for me as well, yeah. and you know, kept in touch. I, you know, 
he was <laughs> just a great guy. Just a good guy, and he would write a letter to like some young comedian would write to him. Yeah, yeah, he would yeah. write back. He, he took would the meet time. With them to, he took the city. time. Yeah, and he was, uh, you know, uh, such a, such a, a master of language and stuff like that. So if you told him a joke, he could he could reword it in a way. Like to me, Carlin has the best. To, one joke to me sums up the '60s and the Woodstock era and, and uh, that Carlin has. It's about Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali t- said, uh, I-, I don't want to go to war because I don't want to kill people. And the government said, well, we're going to strip your boxing license. So, so Carlin's joke was, to me, this sums up the 60s. Carlin said, the government, uh, Muhammad Ali said to the government, I don't want to kill people. I just want to beat them up. Yeah. And the government said, if you don't kill them, we're not going to let you beat them up. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's perfect. That's so. perfect. Carlin, yeah. Yeah. we're going to take a break. We're going to eat some more food. We have a segment from our friend Rachel Atchison, uh, news that you can use. We love you, Rachel. What do you have? Thanks, guys. This news you can use is about what conferences you might be able to go to in the plant-based and vegan world. So within the health world, there are three major conferences each year. There's the PCRM, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine Conference. That's usually in July or August in Washington, D.C., where PCRM is located. And that has about a thousand plant-based doctors come to it every year from all over the country, learning about the latest and greatest in plant-based nutrition. Another conference is the American College of Lifestyle Medicine Conference, ACLM. This is a more under the radar conference for a lot of folks because it's not exclusively plant-based. It is about lifestyle in general. So it's about sleep and uh, eating habits and exercise habits, but it focuses largely on plant-based nutrition. It circulates the country each year. This year it's in Orlando. Next year, I believe it's in San Diego. And the third conference is the Plantrition Conference's International Plant-Based Nutrition Healthcare Conference, where we have about 1,500 plant-based doctors all in one place, learning the latest and greatest in healthcare practices. That's it for OG Talks. News you can use. Back to you guys. All right, so all right, so we're back. Thank you, Rachel. Really Thank appreciate you, it. As Thank always. you, Rachel. Yeah, we love you, Rachel. Um, you know. Uh, there's some new things coming up. I was talking to you about this before. You have a new podcast. You've done a few yeah. in the past. You did something with DePaulo. You did something me and with Nick had Anthony. A, me, me and Nick had a show on DirecTV that was a TV and a radio show. And DirecTV spent a lot mm-hmm. of money. They built a great, great, great studio for us downtown and so in Tribeca. And uh, Nick left the show. Nick, who's brilliant. Yeah. He left the show because of a lot of crazy things. I didn't and, know with Nick. I was... When I first got the job booking the comics, I'd been at Letterman for a while. Yeah. And I said, oh, you know, so he wanted to have a meeting with me, Letterman, to see who I wanted. Right. So I showed him Nick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, this guy's hilarious. It's, it's and he good goes, as a but I don't know yes. if he can right, 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 do right, right. the show. <laughs> so I said, trust me, we'll put it. Yeah. So I put a set together with Nick, and he crushes it. Yeah. So Nick sits down, very happy, and Letterman looks behind me, and he goes, yeah, and that was when I knew that he, you know. Nah, that it, was a good I mean, to get any any sort of like uh, positive affirmation from Letterman, even Norm, yeah. a guy like Norm was the most cynical guy. I mean, treated him like it was his dad. Right. But um, but to hear Letterman yeah, laugh yeah. in the background. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, so then you well, did. Well, well, so, so Nick and I did a show. Then I had my own show, the Artie Lang show, in that same studio with Mike Pochetti, right. and I did that for three years, and it was so much fun. But again, the drugs always came back, and I'm like nodding off on the air. It was terrible. And then I did my own podcast, the Artie Quitter podcast. Mm. That lasted two years, and it's 400 episodes of that. And I'm very proud of it. But, uh, and then, you know, and then I I couldn't do it anymore because of my lifestyle. Anthony Cumia, who I love, gave me a a very great offer to do his show. But Anthony, a lot of people in my life know it was just bad timing. He got me at a bad time in my drug addiction. And we did eight months. And I cherished the shows I did with him, but, uh, you know, they, they had to let me go. I, I have no issues with them letting me go. <laughs> they did what they had to do. I couldn't make it. Here's how bad my addiction was. The show was four days a week, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. I had to be there at 3.59 to do two hours. Right. No preparation. I couldn't make that schedule. Yeah. <laughs> All right? so, I understand. So, so then, of course, I go away. I've been away eight months. I, I did two months in jail. 
uh, Essex County Jail. You got a podcast in jail? I should have. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, forget it. That would be amazing. That would be. That's uh, a good idea. Actually. Yeah. Uh, you, you'd be like the Johnny Cash and yeah. I want to do something at Folsom. I'll uh, talk to a guy <laughs> on my podcast. Well, why? well, I, 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 I know a lot of new gang members now. It's great. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, um, so now I, I came out and I was at a halfway house for three months. Right. The craziest, four, a halfway house up on a hill, looking like something out of a Wes Craven movie, uh, mm -hmm. for three and a half months with 44 convicted felons. It was actually a guy, he, he had 18 felonies on his jacket, and he uh, he was also like hard of hearing and deaf uh, and, and blind. That's and why I, he killed so many people. Well, he couldn't I, hear. I used he to didn't call, know if he killed anyone. I used to call him Felon Killer. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't know what that meant. I said, Google it. Um, he didn't know what that meant. He didn't know what that meant. Yeah, right. Exactly. So, so uh, I said, I know a lot of these guys. And I said, if I ever had a podcast again, would you guys come? I mean, the great, the, the only, it's a scary time. Like, I had, I was roommates no, with Now you have a waiting list? No, well, yeah, well, I, I was roommates with carjackers, guys, arsonists, okay? Um, uh, one guy, so much, huh? one guy who lived uh, in the bunk, I, I was in bunk beds like the Brady Bunch. Four guys, 44 guys in the house that should have had 20. All lunatics, but they're all such fun people and great interviews. So yeah. I said, uh, if I, I'm gonna, I said I'm gonna call my next podcast Artie Lang's Halfway House and try to interview as many of those crazy fucks as I can. Right, and that's what I'm gonna do. That's fantastic. And but Bachetti's Mike. Bachetti's gonna be the co-host. For the people who's... that don't know Mike Bachetti, one of the funniest, nicest guys in the world. And and, and he's he was my uh, co-host on. Uh, uh, the Artie Lang show after Nick left for a long time. And, you know, so... So, so that's I'm, starting I'm get, soon, right? That starts in a couple weeks. That sounds Artie like Lang's halfway house. That's yeah. great. And you're back doing stand-up and you're going to do I a just, lot of that still? I'm all over the road. Uh, I, 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 I've never had more fun. I got a special that'll be coming out next year. Um, Is it a lot of storytelling? Co a combination A lot of, of storytelling. Right. Yeah, I exactly. really love, you know... Uh, you know, in watching your growth as a comic over the years, I always loved your honest, but the storytelling really took you to the next level. Thank I thought. you. Well, you know, let me again, Howard, I, I was always known as a good storyteller, but then I got on the Stern Show, and Howard is such a master at it. And he taught me, you know, the Oscar Wilde thing, brevity, right. uh, you know, get to the point. Howard was a master at getting to the point. So I, I became even better at telling the story after eight and a half years with him. So, you know, it's kind of my thing, but. I, I just films, love, books, and, and, that. and I got a, I got two movie ideas. Uh, I'd love to repitch Crashing now that I'm back. Mm. I'd love to get, get, get Judd and and Pete and say, well, let, let's try to do, let's try to do it again. Because they're working on a film right now. I, I tried yeah. to get Judd in this week. He couldn't because some in Staten working. Island, right? So, yeah, yeah, it's called Staten Island. Yeah. yeah. Judd just uh, texted me. What a what a sweetheart. Judd Apatow is. Just, uh, I again, remember doing another, stand up with him in the in the eighties in yeah. L. A. Doing a gig up in Palmdale, and that's when I met him. And funny then, sweet guy, just the same guy and, now. And a real genuine guy, really another guy like Letterman, really concerned about me. I've had a lot of great people in my life who Good. have been supportive. Well, the truth is, is when we were doing the show, the idea, and Vlad even said, because he loves your work, you know, and he's Thanks, a big fan. I appreciate it. And he said, let's, you know, Artie's getting clean and healthy, and let's bring him in and feed him healthy food. This, this is amazing. I'll be back, Vlad. Yeah, he uh, will. You know yeah. what? Uh, I'm going to bring uh, some just, gang members I, from jail. Oh, yeah, that's, that's who I love yeah. to meet. And I want to hear with Johnny from the Chrome Yeah. Okay, Johnny this is, okay, we're going to arrange our uh, dinner with John. That, that'd I, be just amazing. Wanted, I just wanted to, to let you know, like, I don't care what anybody says. You got you got my support. Man. <laughs> You're not and an asshole. Whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> and uh, my stepdaughter, she's a um, she's a personal chef. If you ever need meal plan oh, or something, wow, that's always, so nice. And you know, John always told me it is always a day one. I, nobody yeah. gives a shit what you did yesterday. Johnny's a miracle. Yeah. So, so let's I, let, I let's just push through. Nine months is amazing. Twelve would be I'm great. About to have All the, right, uh, let's do the it. AA baby. Nine months. Ah. Uh, but thank you, Vlad. It's very nice. This is amazing. Okay? I'm going to tell my friends about this. No, not the friends from... Pro pro yeah, no, not those friends, friends, right? I, those friends. I don't want them to know about that. I love you madly. Eddie, I love I you. I love you, you so You're much. You're such a sweetheart. Thank you. You know, and uh, so thanks for tuning in. Uh, please uh, write in and give reviews and, and all that kind questions. of stuff. Ask questions. Yeah. Come to the Organic Grill to eat. Thanks for Artie Lang, for Vlad Greenberg. I'm Eddie Brill. See thank you around. You. Take care, guys. See you later. Thank <laughs> you.